Good afternoon students. How are you all? Yes, I hope all are doing good. Yes, myself Saumya Kini and I am your computer teacher. So this is for grade 8 and the chapter name is Computer Networks. Yes, we already have seen in Computer Networks part 1. What do you mean by network? What do you mean by computer network? And examples for them. Also, we have seen types of computer networks along with the five different types like personal area network, wide area network, local area network, metropolitan area network and controller area network. So, we saw in detail about LAN, MAN and WAN in our previous part 1 portion. Part one. And in today's class, we will be studying about personal area network and controller area network. After that, we also study about network protocols and protocols, so the definition of protocol and network protocol and types of these network protocols. Like we see that mail protocols as well as network protocols. So all about that we will study in this part 2. Are you all ready? I will share some slides with you. You can have a look at them. At the same time I will explain it to you. Ready students? Yes. Okay, so here we study about personal area network. As the name tells personal area network, it's meant for, the network is meant for personal devices. What are our personal devices? Our smartphones, our laptops, our tablet phones or tablets, etc. Tabs. So we'll see that. A personal area network or PAN, it's not your PAN card, the government has given issued PAN card, it's not that, it's a PAN or personal area network it is. So a personal area network or PAN is a network connected devices around an individual person. These devices can be a computer, phone, printer, smartphone or tablet. This network is meant for personal use only. It typically involves a computer, phone, printer, tablet and so on. The devices can be wired using USB cables. USB cables are nothing but universal serial bus. The full form of USB is universal serial bus. Or they can be connected without wires using Bluetooth. The range of a pan is typically few meters. Examples. A home network consisting of laptops, computers, cell phones or tablets and so on. Yes, what you understand from this particular thing is personal area network can build a network in between the personal devices like smartphone, mobile phones or might be tablets, your laptops and desktop computers. You can connect to a network well, with the help of USB cables or might be without using any cables that is based on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections. Wi-Fi will not use any wires. That's the overall meaning. So what about the distance it can cover? It can cover a distance few meters away. As you are aware that Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or maybe if you consider a USB cable, you can check the length of the cable. It is limited. So, till where you can extend that, till there only you can use that. If you are using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections, the speed and the area it covers is limited to certain meters. So, this is totally meant for personal use and personal devices of a single person. So, that's all about your personal area network. Now, we'll see about controller area network. A CAN or CAN bus is a communication system that uses completely message-based protocol and is typically designed 
for high speed in vehicle communication. This type of network allows communication between microcontrollers and different types of devices in real time without the need for a host computer. It uses completely message based protocol and is mainly in automotive and industrial environments. It can also be used in lifts, escalators, automatic doors, etc. As you can see in the picture, a sudden class cars, autom automotive cars, or might be some other automotive vehicles, you can find that there is a uh, key, yes, automatic or a remote controller keys. Where few cars, if you keep the car of uh, key of the car, it's enough in your pocket. Yes, the car automatically identifies and it opens. And the same way, if you just standing far away, you can just lock the doors or maybe lock the windows, etc. So those things are possible. Even if you see lift or escalators, as soon as it observes that a person is standing, it senses and automatically open the door. And if there are no movements, it will just shut or it might be it close the door. In the same case, like escalators, if you just keep your one step on it, it start moving. And if it no, it don't sense any person nearby, then it will stop working. So as soon as someone step again, it will start working. And if you observe in SUV class motor vehicles, you can see that in case of uh, accidents, that severe accidents, the airbags are provided and automatically it saves the life or it might be just reduces the risk of head injuries. It automatically senses the amount or severity of the accident and it just blows it back automatically. So it stops the banging to the hair, banging head to the uh, steering, etc. And if anti theft control also is there, if somebody is trying to open the door, even the car is locked, someone tries to open the door using some devices or etc. You get a notification, might be a beep sound, the car automatically makes some noise so that it will alert the owner as well as it make the thief to get scared. And if you notice the messages, what you get on the dashboard of a particular vehicle, that also is message based. Like you get the messages, like a seat belt is not good or your fuel tank is getting empty in some 50, uh, what is that, uh, 50, it can work only for 50 meters, the, uh, 50 meter, it, you can just have 10 liter empty, reservoir is having only 10 liters of petrol or diesel, it will just notify you. And if there are some engine issues, it will just show you with some messages in the dashboard. Same way if the lock are not put, I mean the doors are not shut properly, it's not going to on or it might show some indications that seat belt is not, I mean the doors are not locked or might be are not shut properly etc. Even if you observe in lift, escalate, if lift, the capacity of the lift is, uh, you can be identified and it will be put up there, 8 persons per 1 lift or might be so much kg, 960 kilos etc will be put so that if the people are more in the particular lift uh, it's exceeding its weight then it will just not start or not function so these are all based on what, uh, what is that message based so controller area network just controls based on the messages and uh, uh, automatic doors also few vehicles buses and all are automatic doors have the automatic doors it will sense and uh, it will be working or functioning based on their messages so this is all about controller area network and next we'll be see we'll see about network protocols so what are these network protocols so a human protocol and a computer network protocol there are differences we have protocols or set of rules in our life. The same way the network also have got some protocols or step-by-step -step procedures to do some things. So suppose if we, human protocols, if we consider, we just communicate with our friend. We say hi. And as a response, we may get hi. And got the time, so two, two o'clock is mentioned. But the same way if you consider, it, when two computers or two devices, when they communicate, their way of communication is different than the human beings. It will be like 
a TCP or a system or the server is going to send a request and as a response you will get it back and again a particular file or a particular address will be noted and it will load. So computer works differently than the human beings. Moreover, it functions and whatever human beings want to do, it does, but in a different way. So what do you mean by protocol then? A protocol is a set of rules and connections that governs all aspects of communication between computers in a network. Protocols define, protocols defines the standard methods of information transfer and processing for a computer on, the, on a network to communicate with each other. In simple words, when two computers over a network want to communicate, they have certain rules and they follow that. So that is what is protocol, the systematic way of communicating with the other system over a network is referred as protocol. So we have some rules defined by protocol. So according to these rules, the protocol is going to work. The format of data is shared between the different computers. How errors in the exchange of data, if any, will be detected. The ways of compressing the data to transmit it faster and efficiently. How a connection made between two computers should be terminated. These are the set of rules. Right now, four rules are displayed on the screen. I will explain each one. The format of data is shared between the different computers. As we share information over network, the format which we prefer might be different. A particular document, Word document will have .doc extension or might be a music, may have some .mp3 or might be a video can have .mp4 etc. So these are different versions, images will have .jpg or .png etc. So the format of the data is shared between different computers that matters there. So what type of format it has to follow. So etc. will be defined and in case when you exchange any messages or files, in case there are chances that there is a failure or error occur in the message conversation, what should be done, how it has to be detected. So about that there are rules and the ways of compressing data to transmit it faster and efficiently. You know that more than 25 MB we are not supposed to send. I mean we can send it but through the drives, Google drives, we can share the document. And what happens when we try to share a particular thing? We can either compress it, we can zip the file, we can drag the file. So what way we prefer to compress a particular data which we want to transmit so that it will be transferred or exchanged very fast and effectively without losing any information. So about that there are rules. And the last one, how a connection is made between two computers should be terminated. You know that you are communicating with your friend over some uh, video conference applications or might be some uh, uh, mail. Once you finish with your communication, once you finish with your uh, connections, how you have to stop the connections, how you are going to end up the connection which built using the uh, communication. How are you going to terminate it? About that rules are defined. So all about the rules. Next we have types of networking protocols. We have two types of protocols, networking protocol and a mail protocol. Under networking protocol, we have HTTP, FTP, TCP or IP. We'll see about HTTP now. It is a standard format to display a HTML page over the web. And you know that you have studied in your lower grades how to write a coding for a web page, how to create your own web pages. In order to create web pages, we use a script language that is HTML, that is hypertext markup language. You will be use this and the uh, uh, script or the uh, HTML programs will be written in a text editor like Notepad++ plus plus or any text editors like WordPad or Notepad. Now, we have certain rules in order to transmit or communicate that we use HTTP protocol. So it's a standard format to display a HTML page over a web. So if your web page which is written using HTML language have to be displayed on the screen, we use hypertext markup language 
we use hypertext transfer protocol so we use which protocol http the full form is hypertext transfer protocol and file transfer protocol why it is used as the name suggests file transfer so it is used to transfer files over the internet any kind of file we want to transfer from one system to another system we use ftp that is file transfer protocol we'll see next tcp or ip tcp and ip are two different protocols that are often linked together even though they are linked together they are not the same tcp is a different protocol ip is a different protocol so that's all about tcp and ip so in detail it is given here suppose you want to send a message to your friend whatever message you want to send it will be broken into small packets as you can see here the picture message is a single thing single block now when you want to send it to your friend tcp is responsible in breaking the message into small addressable packets like the entire message block will be divided into small packets and a particular address or a reference number will be noted with that message so the small small messages broken parts are called as packets so we can see here a particular block a entire block of message is divided into five small packets and you can see on them each numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 these are nothing but five packets with their addresses respectively 1 2 3 4 5 and ip is responsible in collecting and till it reaches the isp and it is received by the receiver end so this function is done by is ip that is internet protocol once the receivers end the isps that is internet service providers receive the message in terms of the broken packets it is its tcp is responsible to collect the message or the collect the broken packets together according to their address and combine it together and keep it as a readable form the message will be again converted back in which way it was sent so what happens the message will be sent without losing any data in case if the data is lost again the receivers and tcp how to send a request to the senders uh, tcp saying that a particular error has occurred that we did not receive a particular numbered packet so send it again so it's a request it will send a request as a service so the sender will rece uh, receive the message and it will send back the packets again so that it can be clubbed together according to the address of the packet and it can be retained and the message can be read by the receiver's end so we'll see that the information that we send through the internet is broken into packets by tcp using the packet switching mode technique tcp is a digital networking communication method that breaks the large data into suitably sized blocks known as packets as i said the entire block of message will be broken into small packets and it will be having address on it and what is ip so the ip is responsible for sending for sending these packets to the right address by assigning them a sequence number these packets are then sent to the internet service provider that is nothing but isp which in turn sends the packets through multiple levels of network computers and mediums to its destination so as i said tcp and ip are two different protocols even though they are named together or they are referred together the ip is responsible for sending these broken packets to the right address like how the postman will send the, uh, or the get the post cards which is uh, referred to you or which you have uh, like which is uh, addressed in your name the postmaster what he does he just gives the post which are in your name or your address the same way ip is responsible for sending these packets to the right address by assigning them a sequence number as you all can see 1 2 3 4 5 these are the assigned numbers so this is done by ip and these packets are then sent to the isp which in turn sends the packets through multiple levels of networks so isp like vodafone airtel bsnl tata docomo jio etc isps or 
internet service providers are there so the ip whichever sequence the orders are sent so through multiple levels of network these are sent to the computers and mediums or its to destination so that is done by isps after receiving the packet the tcp checks whether it has all the packets and reassembles them in the correct order to get the information this tcp is from the receiver's end so from the sender's end it is going to break the packets and the same way you have tcp and ip in the receiver end the receiver end tcp is responsible for receiving all the packet and check whether it has received all the packets and it will reassemble them in the correct order to get the entire message or information if there is a missing packet what if there is a packet missing in the communication so it has to send a request for the same to transmitting computer until it receives all packets even if it receives 1 2 3 4 5 in that four is missing for example so the receivers and the tcp have to put a request to the transmitting computer saying that a packet which is named four is missing so you need to send it again so till it receives it it is not going to uh, club it together and uh, get the proper information so that's all about the tcp or ip protocol we'll see about now main protocols smtp it is used when a mail is sent from an email client to an email server so as you all know that smtp is used when a mail is sent from an email to the client server see simple mail transfer protocol that is the full form of smtp whenever a message or email is sent from a email client it will reach to the receiver's server and it will be staying there till the client or till the person who is meant that message to whom the message is meant till he opens his gmail account or yahoo account or whichever account he has till he opens it the message will be saved in the server so smtp is responsible is used or smtp or simple mail transfer protocol is used when a mail is sent from an email client to an email server so email client and email server the message transmission is done with the help of smtp next we'll see pop 3 so it is used for receiving mails and imap it is used to store email messages on a email server and download them the function of pop 3 and imap is almost similar whereas pop 3 is like from your side you compose a mail and you send it to your friend how the actually message is going to transfer as we studied that the message is going to break and uh, isdcp will break the messages and ip is going to give assembles or it gives some addresses to that and it will transfer and once the isp receives it it is going to uh, just uh, send the message in the you uh, using some uh, network protocols or network layers different network layers and from the receiver end it is going to reassemble it back is yes, this all things we have studied in network protocol along with that whenever you compose a mail and send it till your receiver or till whom you have sent the recipient till he or she opens the mail it has to be stored somewhere so that is done by this imap or pop thing now what happens once it is saved in the receiver see the message what to compose will be sent and once it is sent it will be from your server site it will be sent and from the client or the person who is the recipient it will be saved in their server i a server box and once the server is like finds that the recipient has opened their account email account so then it will transfer to the system and the receiver or the recipient of the message can read what message you have sent and suppose you delete the message it won't be available if it is a pop 3 whereas if you deleted the message if you use imap for the communication of these messages email then any time you can get that message because there is a storage so it is used to store email messages on email server and download them 
So once you download them, again if you my mistake, you have deleted, you can get the messages using IMAP. Whereas POP3, it is not possible. Once you read the message and then you delete it, it won't be available and it will not be stored in the recipient server. Whereas IMAP protocol, if you use, it will be it can be read and fetched any point of time. Even though if it is deleted, it will be present in the receiver's server. So simple words you remember that it is used to store email messages on a mail server and download them. Whereas in POP3 it will be used to receive mail but it will not be saved in a mail server in the recipient site. So that's all about today's class. I hope the class whatever topics I covered in today's class is clear to you. And in the next session we will be studying about components of a network. So that's all for today's students. Hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, yes, I would like to share one video so that you can just recall the part one and part two topics all together once. So I'll share one video to you. Networks Computer Network A computer network is a group of two or more computer systems connected to each other. This means that every computer in the network can send information to the others. The main advantage of networking is to share resources such as printers, scanners, disk drives and CD or DVD drives. Multiple users can communicate among themselves and share data and information. Components of data communication Message The message is the information to be communicated. Sender The sender is the device that sends the data message. Receiver The receiver is the device that receives the message. Medium The transmission medium is the physical path by which a message travels from sender to receiver. Types of computer networks There are many types of computer networks including local area networks or LANs. The computers are geographically close together like connected in the same building. For example, network in your computer lab Wide Area Networks WANs The computers are farther apart and are connected by telephone lines or radio waves. For example, ATMs all over Metropolitan Area Networks or MANs A network designed for a town or city. For example, the Cable TV Network Campus Area Networks or CANs The computers are within a limited geographic area such as a campus or military base. For example, an intranet working within IIT Personal Area Networks or PAN Today's class It is finished. a computer network used for data transmission amongst devices such as computers, telephones tablets and personal digital assistants. For example, printer, fax machines, telephones, scanners, etc. are connected through network. Internet Internet is a network of networks. It is a global network connecting millions of computers all over the world. Hundreds of countries are linked together via computers to exchange data, news and opinions. Each internet computer is independent and called a host. It uses existing public telephone and communication networks including satellites to relay data between networks using routers. The fastest growing part of the internet 
is the World Wide Web. www. Other parts of the internet include services such as Gopher, Telnet, and FTP. File transfer protocol. I hope the session was interesting and the video just made you to recall all the things what we have studied so far. Yes. So I hope you just record what we studied in part one and till now part two. So next class, remember that you practice part one and part two and attend part three, where we will be learning about components of a network. Yes. Thank you, students. Stay home. Stay safe.